Kahala Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, Bashem Kakadash, to honor the elders and apostles, great millstone of goodwill. I am not a member, however, I have entered into their labors. Peace, mercy, and blessing to the sincere brothers and sisters, students, wherever you are, whatever your lot may be. This is another quick one. I've um, got this little excerpt I picked up on the old uh, time map, and I thought that it was very, uh, oh, thought that it was very interesting. Dang it. Okay. All right, here we go. Hopefully it's not too loud. I'm gonna play this. Philosophize a bit too much, my dear sir. But believe me, I feel what I think. And I seem to be philosophizing only to those who cannot think what they feel because they blind themselves with self-sentiment. I know that to many people such self-blinding seems much more human. But the contrary is really true. For a man never reasons so much or becomes so introspective as when he suffers. It's when he suffers that he seeks to find the reasons for his suffering, to find out whether it's just or unjust that he should have to suffer them. But on the other hand, when a man is happy, he takes his happiness as he comes and doesn't think about, just as if happiness were his right. An animal suffers without reasoning about its suffering. But take the case of a man who suffers and begins to reason about it. And oh no, it can't be allowed. Let him suffer as an animal suffers, and then, ah, yes, he is human. Oh, look here, you're off again, philosophizing worse than ever. I'm not philosophizing. I'm crying aloud the reason of my suffering. You argue in philosophy. <laughs> crying aloud the reason for my suffering. And I can, you can equate that to a lot of people, because they love to just talk about, at the end of the day, I just want to be happy. I just want, I just want happiness. Well, <coughs> excuse me. Well, you know what? In the times we're moving into, that just ain't the thing. 144, four, right? What do you call Allah? You have a bunch of shy. All right, so philosophizing. Let's get that. Speculate or theorize about fundamental or serious issues. Like what? Like the curses. Uh, especially a, or being shot down. And, well, that's, that, those are the curses. Anyways, all right, so uh, especially in a tedious or pompous way. So he was slighting the dude, telling him for he's philosophizing, but the guy simply is just trying. Uh, the guy speaking, saying that I'm not philosophizing, I, I, I'm crying aloud my suffering. Uh, you can see that he was trying to slight him. Now with our people, <laughs> you can put that and say you always talk, and, and this is not me. This is their words. Like you always talking about that Bible shit. You always talking about how we need to be. Uh, not eating this and, and listening to coming back to the Lord. Who 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 wrote that book? Man wrote that book. It, it, you know the the same old rhetoric. All right. Uh, explain or argue a point or idea in terms of one's philosophical theories. All right. So first things first. Damn. Twenty eight forty five. There we go. Okay, so those of us who understand this truth and who understand understand why we are suffering it is because we suffered and we wanted to know why, right? And you know, how could we know unless some man teach us and we were taught and now we can pull the scriptures from this book and you can ponder on that suffering and that suffering makes you stronger, especially when you go through something, when you have a trial, because you're going to go through levels and levels of different trials, levels of different tribulations, things that may or may not set you back uh, physically or, you know, uh, and the Lord wants to see, you know, how you handle those situations. You know, these are all tests here uh, that we have on this, you know, on this dimensional plane. Uh, so moreover, these curses shall come upon thee, and shall pursue thee, and overtake thee, till thou be destroyed, because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of Yahweh thy power, to keep his commandments, and his statutes, and his, uh, which he commanded thee. So we always wondered, before coming into this truth, why are we at the bottom? Why do we do this? Why do we not have that? Why, why, why? And then, when the Lord is so gracious and merciful as to uh, open your eyes to see and your ears to hear to the gospel, you see it. And then from there, you do your best to seek him. You know what? 
you seek him and you walk uh and you walk accordingly and that doesn't mean that you're not gonna you know keep going through things because you know that that's just not how this thing works it's just not you're not gonna ride out into the sunset once you learn that you're an israelite that is not what prophecy says if anything, you have a philo uh, uh not a philosophy, a um, what the heck, a uh, a duty. Eight and seventeen. All right, if anything, you have a duty to correct yourself and to fa or not to or to pray for the strength to walk. In the way that is pleasing unto him. All right, Proverbs eight. When I said seek him early, seventeen. I love them that love me. And remember, if you love him, you'll keep his commandments. You are obedience, obedience, and fear. All right, you show your love to our power. Um, and those that seek me early shall find me. And there's also another one. If you go back to first chapter, it's in the very first chapter too. Twenty-eight Proverbs one and twenty-eight. They shall call upon me, but I will not answer. And they shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. So this is the situation that uh, the two-thirds are going to find themselves in, because uh, when the Lord called if, by way of His men on the highways and byways, or anybody on, on here preaching the proper gospel uh, via the internet. When they had the time and they had the liberty and they had the freedom to listen, they chose not to. They chose to just kick about in that that pig pen of suffering, or you know, as long as they had their blunts and their alcohol, or as long as they had you know whatever worldly thing, they were cool. They were fine. Let's see. There was something I probably missed in there. Let's play that one more time. I want to make sure I covered everything. Sometimes a bit too much, my dear sir. But believe me, I feel what I think. And I seem to be philosophizing only to those who cannot think what they feel. Right. See, so he said he feels what he thinks. And he seems to only be philosophizing. So in a pompous matter, he only seems to be being pompous to those who don't have eyes to see and ears to hear. And that is what you're going to run into, especially when you first uh, uh, wake up to this truth and you're trying to tell everybody. And, uh, you know, it goes through one ear and not the other. All right. So that. OK, so we got that. I want to make sure I covered everything on here before I move on. And also, I did say um, that once you find out you're an Israelite, you don't just ride into the sunset. Right. Um, Ecclesiasticus 2, or better, also known as Sirach. All right, so once you find out and you, the, the excitement, right, the, the, when you swallow the roll and it, it's in your mouth as honey and it hits your belly and it turns bitter. And some of us who are a little bit farther than others, you know, who knows? Who, who knows whose walk is what? But you start to hit that bitter point, right? My son, this is Sirach or Ecclesiasticus chapter 2, verse 1. If thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. All right, so once you wake up, there's not, it's not, you don't ride off into the sunset. Don't let anybody tell you that because our people love, you know, for to prophesy unto, uh, love for us to prophesy unto them uh, nice things and, and to coddle them. Prophesy unto us vain things. What scripture is that? Prophesy unto us. Oh man, let's see. I need that one before I finish. Smooth things, yeah. That's what our people like. Isaiah thirty. All right, so let me read this. Let me read. Let me finish this real quick. Okay, prepare thyself for temptation, set thy heart aright, and constantly endure, and make no haste in time of trouble. Cleave unto him, and depart not away that thou mayest uh, increase, be increased at thy last end. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully, 
and be patient when thou art changed to a low estate. For gold is tried in the fire, and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. So, if it was all supposed to be happy-go-lucky, once you find out you're an Israelite, um, why would why would this be written? And why would um this be written? Isaiah thirty and nine through thirteen, um, that this is a rebellious people, and we are lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord. <clears throat> Which say to the seers, and the seer is um, also known as a prophet, see not, and the prophets prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceits, get you out of the way, turn aside out of the path, and cause thy whole, and cause the holy one of Israel to cease from before us. All right, so that's what our people want. So when you when they when we try to quote unquote philosophize <laughs> as what they would say um they don't want to hear they don't want to hear anything they don't want to hear anything that involves um a struggle or suffering because under to their uh in their thought process it's you know ain't i suffering enough and i struggled enough well you know <laughs> hey we've all been to that point but you know, if once you're given the eyes to see again and the ears to hear, you wake up to the fact that the curses are one thing and then the judgment of whatever action that you have are, are another. And then when you are the righteous are made to pray. So when you try to live right, um, uh, uh, you know, this devil's going to come after you. And, and at some point. You're going to have to separate from this place completely, or we will have to separate from this place completely, spiritually um, and physically. We may or may not be cut out of society. Who knows? Everybody's walk is going to be different. I don't know. You know, we, we, the only thing you know is that the Lord said his servants will eat, you know, when, when everyone else is dying of thirst and, and starvation, we're going to eat and drink. And we're going to laugh at their calamity, and he's going to laugh through us at them. So all that other stuff, all the semantics and all the details, who knows? You don't know. But that's where your faith comes in. That's where the trust comes in. That's the hard part for a lot of people. Is to just say, you know what? I'm not worried about it. And in the flesh, you're going to be scared. But overall, you say, you know what? The Lord said he's going to do it. Then he's going to do it. And I'm going to get one more scripture about uh, tribulation. And then we'll call it from here. Acts 14, 22, maybe. All right, so this will be the last one. Uh, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. So if anybody's telling you that there is no trouble and that there is no, quote unquote, not quote unquote, there is no, you know, MOTB, there, there is no more after we, you know, the Lord is just going to come and sweep everybody up and we're all good to go, right? If anybody's telling you opposite of tribulation, suffering, uh, or anything that is just relatively all good and smooth, you need to beware. You need to pay attention and keep your eye on that person um, because that is not what the scriptures foretell, all right? So with that being said, repent, repent, repent live right live right to the best of your ability i want to say that i do mean follow the law statutes and commandments um walk brotherly um walk circumspectly um should just keep repenting if anything because we are fall we have fallen so low as a people and we have transgressed the lord's law day in and day out and you can't be saved by it but it is a way to show your faith and obedience and without faith you cannot please Yahweh Shai. so Keep your hand on the plow and keep pushing. All right, we're moving into some turbulent times. So keep your hand on the plow. Keep pushing. Shalom.